you know, encourage you to um, seek out, you know, disinformation. Uh, one thing in this um, that has since changed, the uh, utility construction um, in, uh, from Mission to Sutter is, was slated, uh, well, the utility construction along the project was slated to start in April. Uh, many of you uh, might remember that we had a very, very rainy winter. Um, which uh, slowed the construction schedule down significantly. Um, and uh, we are going to uh, be trying to make up some of that time. Um, but the utility work has not started yet, um, and we're still looking at starting that. So um, that's kind of uh, a lot of the big picture stuff. It's, uh, many of you, I, I've talked about this project here in the past, but uh, you know, this is a, a really transformative project to FanS. Um, not only does it um, will it bring dramatically better uh, bus service, uh, which will speed times and connect uh, residents, uh, you know, along the Van Ness corridor to things like Caltrain's going south uh, to the Mission, uh, all the way out to Daly City uh, with you know to the Mission with the 49. Um, you know, these projects uh, are, you know, will provide dramatically better service, uh, but it will also provide uh, significantly improved street lighting, pedestrian safety facilities, and it will replace the more than 100-year-old subway system, or sorry, not subway system, ut uh, sewer system um, that, uh, you know, is, you know, was put into the ground in the 1880s. Um, you know, we uh, relying on a system that is that old doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and so, as uh, a, a, a way of limiting the impact of construction on the community, we are combining these projects so we're not ripping up Van S once, then needing to go back and rip it up again to repair uh, the utilities, the, uh, the, uh, the subsurface uh, sewer system. Uh, and that will allow us to kind of do it all at once, um, and uh, we call that a complete street project. Uh, we find that complete street projects are significantly better for the neighborhood, and um, that's something that uh, we uh, think um, you know uh, is an improvement over having that longer construction period. Um, is that more of a nest only that the city feels that doing it all at one time? Will help the city compared to the uh, the other neighborhoods. So um, we uh, so we have a program called the Complete Streets Program, um, where you know when we are doing streetscape projects, we are trying to do that as many places as we can. Sometimes it doesn't make any sense to do that. Um, sometimes it does. Or and you have the same people come back like seems like every four or five months and doing something on the same corner and ripping up the street. So yeah. I can hear it every morning outside my window, so that's why I'm saying. I mean, it is the same people, and I'm just like, well, where is the, the sign that says you're supposed to be ripping up this corner again? But anyway, so um, I, I'm not sure which corner and which project you're talking about specifically. Um, but you know, the city is experiencing, as you guys all know, massive growth in uh, a wide variety of areas. Um, we, um, you know, since 2010 have. Uh, welcomed, I think, 100,000 new people to the city of San Francisco. Um, that places increased burden on our transportation system, our housing stocks, um, those kinds of things. Uh, you know, our, our office infrastructure. So, you know, there's construction all over the city. Uh, we are doing construction to try to bring safety improvements um, to a lot of different corridors, make San Francisco streets a lot safer. Um, so, you know, some of the constructions are construction, some of it isn't. Um, if you have specific uh, concerns about construction impacts, uh, you know, we can talk about that um, afterwards. Um, and if it's our construction, uh, you know, we can talk about that. Um, one of the things um, that it's important to uh, remember is uh, that the, uh, so, uh, so for the Van S construction, um, basically uh, we're going to start doing construction on the overhead lines, the um, which provide uh, you know electrical power, um, you know uh, to the 49, 
Um, and uh, that is uh, obviously, you know, um, a pretty significant work. Um, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, we started that on Sunday, um, and we're going to be doing uh, work on the median um, uh, between Hayes and Ellis Street uh, this week, uh, as well as between Market and Church Streets. Um, we also, um, so, uh, you know, between the hours of 10, uh, 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., um, traffic, uh, some traffic lanes will be closed for construction. Uh, we also uh, will be having uh, crews to repair potholes between, uh, on Van Ness, between Mission and Lombard Street, um, you know, uh, that we are going, you know, at the same time as we're working on the overhead lines. Um, as you might have noticed, uh, the significant winter rains did a lot of damage to uh, streets throughout the state of California, but uh, also here in San Francisco. Uh, so we'll be trying to repair some of those potholes. Um, so uh, work is going to be uh, moving forward uh, starting on uh, the 15th on Monday on the western sidewalk um, on Van Ness from Mission to Lombard Streets uh, uh, will uh, begin. Um, and so, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, the western part of the sidewalk uh, is going to, you know, have some pretty significant work uh, through uh, the 18th, um, which is uh, when we get the construction schedules. If you'd like this kind of information about um, what's going on construction-wise, um, uh, if you go to our Van Ness Improvement Project website, if you just Google Van Ness Improvement Project, and if you sign up for the email updates um, for, the, for construction, um, they will uh, send you one of these uh, you know, emails that tells you the construction schedules, uh, tips, and the like. Other options for additional information include um, the Van Ness Improvement Project's uh, office hours. Uh, they have a construction office um, on the third floor of 180 Redwood Street, which is near Van Ness and Golden Gate. Um, you can go uh, during the drop-in hours on Tuesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. and on Fridays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., excluding holidays. Um, and uh, go talk to uh, the Van Ness Improvement Project staff. Uh, the staff there um, are, it's uh, Sean Cronin and Kate McCarthy are the public information officers that are working on the project. Uh, great people, very helpful. Are, are, uh, those, are those MTA uh, employees? They're, they're, so they're not construction. Yeah. So why do you need help if they are working for the MTA in the city? Why does it have to be dropping out? So th those are hours when anyone can come at, without a scheduled yeah, appointment no. and just talk to somebody uh, about Vanna, anything related to Van Ness, and they'll help you. You can also, you know, if you have specific questions, uh, you can uh, send the project email or you can send me an email. Um, you know, I've distributed my card many, many times. We had an open house last week, so I kind of got cleaned out of cards. Um, while I'm waiting to reorder ones. So if uh, you guys need my card, I've got two. Um, but Michael has my contact information. Um, but those cards are supposed to last me for two weeks until I they uh, give You're me new ones. So, um, but you can, like I said, um, you can email the project team at any time. Those are designed to be convenient times when uh, members of the community can drop by um, if they so choose. Um, email or calling 311 will also get you information. Um, uh, you can also call me um, and uh, I will uh, talk to you about that. Does anybody have any additional? Yes. Um, I'm asking, okay, p parallel routes. Like when Van Ness has all that construction, Goff, Franklin on one side and Polk Larkin. and Larkin will be affected on the other will be there will be rerouting of buses and things. Um, so to my knowledge, uh, there will not be rerouting of buses on any of those streets. Um, the closures will, uh, you know, the, and, you know, as, so, like, and this is for right now. Um, you know, as the, uh, you know, as the project continues, they might have changes to do that. Um, my understanding is uh, that right now, they are only closing some 
lanes of traffic, so other lanes of traffic are open. And again, this is from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., so you're oh. looking at owl service. Um, so, uh, you know, right now, um, there, I don't believe there is any rerouting of buses onto any of those streets. Thank you. Uh, if you are driving, I would encourage you to use one of those streets instead of Van S at those times. Does anybody have any additional questions on the Van Ness Improvement Project? Great. I mean, buckle in, we've got... When do the trees go in? Are they going in? Are they when do the trees go in? Yeah. Um, I am not 100% sure when the trees go in. I think, so, I, the, my understanding is that they, um, you know, the, you know, a lot of trees were moved from the median, um, you know, uh, and we have a lot of work left to... Um, so that would be one of the last things, obviously. Yeah, I believe so. You know, and, and I believe... very contentious yeah, um, you know, as, as we said at the time, you know, the majority of the trees um, were actually dead trees. Um, so we're replacing them two to one with, uh, I believe that that's correct, two to one with live trees. Um, we hope that having trees that are alive is an improvement. Um, so uh, so that's kind of the Van Ness Improvement Project. Like I said, um, oh, we also have stickers here if you'd like a Van Ness Improvement Project sticker. It's the only swag I brought today, so please take, please take them. Um, and you know, you, uh, if you are living um, you know, near, like on the corridor itself, um, these, uh, you know, these flyers get mailed out, um, but you also can get this um, by signing up online. You know, you can get this information by signing up online at uh, it's uh, the at the Van Ness Improvement Project website. Um, so the other thing is uh, it, uh, just to follow up with uh, with uh, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot the gentleman with the hat's name. Um, but uh, Van Ness BRT at sfmta.com or 415-646-2310. Uh, on the back of this flyer um, is the direct contact information for the project team, um, for the uh, public information officers that are working on this project. So, um, is there, yes sir? Is, is there a community advisory committee? There is a community advisory committee. Um, and there is a community advisory committee uh, so, um, how much push do they have? Out of curiosity. Well, I mean, they're the. I mean, they advise the project and work with the project on, you know, um, you know, a myriad of issues. But at this point, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, you know, the advisory committee and the business advisory committee, of which, um, you know, both, uh, um, both are. So the business advisory committee meetings are Thursdays from uh, three to. 4:30, um, and I don't remember when. I believe the next. Um, so the average Joe don't have a say. Well, so the average Joe does have a say. We, I mean, we've had years of outreach. Outreach on this project started in 1989. Uh -huh. um, I was three years old when uh, you know the initial plans um, and funding for this project um, were put on the ballot. Um, so, you know, at this point, what the outreach, or what the, um, at this point, this uh, is designed to, uh, you know, try to mitigate construction, um, you know, impacts, and, and work to make it as best as we can while we're, uh, while we're tearing up the street. Since I haven't read the material, is, is it fully funded because of the people in uh, so-called Washington? Uh, so, to my knowledge, this is fully funded. Um, Great. I just don't want to see. I mean, we got so we got a seventy-five million dollars from the federal government last fall. Um, I believe that that uh, I believe that that um, uh, was the uh, I believe that that was the final amount of funding uh, that was needed. Um, so. Uh, 
So yeah, so that's uh, the Van S project. Um, and so now um, I'm going to direct your attention to the Gary Rapid Flyer um, that uh, you got handed. So um, another project that started when I was three years old and is um, starting to come to fruition. Um, as a part of, in, 1998, uh, in 1989, uh, Gary was identified as uh, you know, one of the corridors the city should prioritize for transportation improvements. Um, you know, uh, as may, you may or may not know, in 1912, uh, the SFMTA, or Muni at the Municipal, Municipal Railway, um, launched the first uh, public streetcar service in the country down Geary Street. Mayor James Rolfe uh, used one of the first 40 nickels uh, minted at the San Francisco Mint to pay for his ride and then drove the streetcar down Geary Street. Uh, we ripped out the, uh, we ripped out the uh, tracks in the late 40s, early 50s. Um, you know, we uh, tunneled under Geary um, and Fillmore. Um, but we have been trying to uh, put some, okay. you know, uh, more efficient transportation options down Geary Street since 1989. Um, Geary is one of the uh, is the uh, large has the largest single ridership of any bus line west of the Mississippi. 52,000 people a day uh, take uh, a bus down, uh, take a 38 down Geary Street. Um, you know, we know that uh, there are crowded buses and that there are uneven wait times. Um, you know, and that uh, that is, you know, uh, you know, as the city has gotten more and more uh, dense, as more people have moved here. Uh, like I said earlier, 100,000 people in the last, you know, since 2010. Um, we, uh, you know, uh, there's been problems with, you know, uh, transit speeds. Uh, this project. Um, will really uh, is really intended to uh, you know speed that up, um, allow people to move quickly to the western part of the city on public transit. So uh, the proposals um, on the Geary Rapid project um, are basically um, extension of the transit only lanes um, that currently exist um, all the way out to Stanion Street. Um, improvements on stop spacing so there isn't. Um, so that the bus isn't stopping every block, which you know slows uh, transit times, makes the bus less reliable because every time you stop, uh, it, you know, people boarding, it, it creates headway, um, which makes it harder. Sidewalk extensions or bulb outs at 40 street corners, um, those are intended to improve pedestrian safety. Um, traffic signal upgrades that improve transit performance and traffic flow. Um, those uh, help us uh, by allowing the bus to catch the green light, holding the light green for a bus, um, so that the bus can, um, uh, so that the bus can, you know, move through an intersection to the stop. So you're not having a situation where, uh, you know, the bus sits at a, um, you know, sits on the wrong side of the street. Um, from the stop at a red light when people could be loading and unloading um, and then has to go across the street, uh, pull into a bus stop, and then do the unloading and loading there. Um, also, it'll include uh, new pedestrian countdown signals, uh, pavement and utility upgrades as well. Uh, yes, sir. So I know this was decided when you were three years old, but um, <laughs> I'm just curious, and I know that all of the area can't do like Burness. Just just like Burness, you're having that 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 center thing where you pull the dead trees. Um, the buses are there. But I don't see why 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 they just say they didn't realize, oh we're doing Burness like that, why don't we do that one instead of having having the buses have to pull over and they have to build this other street line. So what you're saying is you don't understand why the Geary red transit lanes are on the right hand side yeah, and the they curve be in the middle where they should be in the middle. Yeah, and then that way, if you pull all that stuff up in the center of it, and I, I understand it can't be done on all of Geary. I get it because it's like a billboard, it goes under and all the other you know, spots. But um, that that 
I, and I would feel comfortable where the buses could be able to have the, uh, the signal light not uh, turn red on. 